Well, well, well. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. You lovely folks joining me here nice and early over at Marvel Snap Zone. Welcome back. It's good to see you and hopefully you, much like me, are enjoying the global release of Marvel Snap. It's been incredible to watch the game kind of thrive, people busting out of the woodwork, all the great advertising. Uh, everyone's excited and it's really cool to see people excited about a property that we've been passionate about over here for a very long time. Uh, so welcome to the first of a brand new series on the channel. Hopefully this is something that you guys enjoy and something that we can keep doing in the near future and it's a benefit to those people that are joining us uh, and just bring in their way uh, through the game uh, as they go. Uh, welcome to deck feature, I guess. So I'm not sure what we're going to be calling this just yet, so something along those lines. Uh, so we're going to be taking a, a randomly submitted user deck list from our bank of user decks over at Marvel Snap Zone uh, to feature on the channel, hopefully every day, uh, but we'll see whether or not it kills me. Uh, and take it from there. We wanted to explore something from one of our brand new players today, kind of show you exactly how it works with Pool 1, uh, and then head into some games and jam it on the ladder, obviously into some Pool 3 decks, but we'll see whether we can, you know, go what it takes to hang uh, with those Pool 3 decks. Uh, so this one is a Pool 1 ongoing list from a user named Yo Yakuman. Uh, we're going to go through this card by card in a minute, explain the thought process, and then jump onto the ladder and see how it goes. Before we do get started, however, if you haven't already, do consider subscribing to the channel here at Marvel Snap Zone. We want to make more content for you that's going to increase your enjoyment as you go along this journey with us into all things Snap. If you do want the article version of this deck, the uh, details about how the video goes, maybe the importable deck list, comment section down below. Go check it out for me down there. And if you would perhaps want to see your deck featured in this uh, series on YouTube and watch me play it and give you some thoughts and feelings, well, by all means, uh, tag us at Marvel Snap Zone on Twitter. Show us the deck you've submitted using our deck builder over on Marvel Snap Zone and we'll take a look at what we can find in our community deck building uh, as we go forward. Uh, okay, should be everything said. Let's take a look at this deck put together by Yo Yakuman. Uh, really solid pull one base. You tend to find a lot of people go for either Kazoo or the ongoing deck in pull one. Uh, mostly because there's a lot of power cards here that remain here for the entire time that you're in the pool. Uh, so starting things off here with Ant-Man. If you're not familiar with Ant-Man, it is a powerful one drop card that offers you up to four stats for one cost, assuming you have four units on the same location. Really good on rates, he's a lot of play in one going all the way up to pool number three. A very, very solid one drop that you can expect to see a lot of in your gameplay. We've got Nightcrawler in here, need a little bit more one cost flexibility. Uh, being able to move from location to location, very, very powerful in the early stages of Marvel Snap. Gives you the ability to fill up a location and then duke your opponent with information they didn't have. Uh, Nightcrawler also plays very, very well with Angela as another way to get an additional plus two onto her at some point in the game and then move him off to make room for somebody else. Uh, Yondu, uh, another one drop here. Not so much the uh, card I'd expect in this deck, to be honest. Yondu's very powerful. Uh, it does see some play in bounce decks and things like uh, Death Wave, um, but this is not a, a one drop I expected um, in terms of like an ongoing deck. Good chance there's maybe not necessarily... Um, anything better that's pretty cheap to use uh, in this spot in pool one, which would make a lot of sense. Uh, or maybe the opponent's just been having a good time uh, ripping the opponent's America Chavez is away. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, interesting one there. Angela, my favorite card in pool number one, as you might be able to tell from the lovely art style I get to showcase on screen. Uh, arguably one of the most powerful cards in pool one. Uh, just incredible amount of stats for just two costs. Definitely a card you'd want to be playing with plenty moving forward. Uh, Colossus, the first of our ongoing creatures here that we are looking to buff with our bonuses a little bit later on really simple can't reduce its power can't be destroyed or moved which is very beneficial to certain locations like death's domain uh which I mean you could just play into with colossus which is pretty great and it's going to be able to get that bonus from spectrum as the game continues uh, the punisher another three cost ongoing card here pretty clear that we're looking to build up a curve to work towards spectrum a bit of a weak effect this one but you are limited in the number of ongoing cards you have in pool number one and it's super reasonable to have like five or six power uh, from the punisher at one location so seems fine by me uh, captain america another three cost ongoing card here almost the uh inverse version of the punisher uh, punisher wants your opponent to play to one location captain america wants you to play to one location stack up many things here and you'll get more bonuses 
on your cards that you're playing on this location. Uh, really, really good at challenging a single location when you're looking to play a card like Namor, which we'll see in a minute, to challenge a location all by itself. So incentivizing you to stack up all in one place seems like a pretty good way to go, if you ask me. Uh, last of the three drops here, we've got access to Cosmo. Cosmo, a card that is actually a very powerful tool for you early on in your journey for Marvel Snap. Uh, it sees a lot of play in like Destroyer and stuff in terms of tier 3 decks, but early on this is going to help you turn off powerful on reveals like White Tiger uh, and even like Odin re-triggering those things. And you don't have any other ways of doing that, so a really powerful ongoing effect you can play around with in the form of Cosmo. Uh, Namor, as we mentioned a minute ago, ongoing card, going to get a bonus from Spectrum in the late game, and most importantly, big old 10 points of power if it is the only card on that location. Uh, really, really strong stuff with Namor. Iron Man, an all-star that will continue to see play in this series, I'm sure, plenty moving forward. Very, very popular, very, very strong, one of the best ongoing abilities in the game, and just gets better the more cards you unlock, so keep your eyes on this one. Claw, really strong ongoing ability once again. Another 5 drops card here towards our endgame, looking to split power across locations. This plays really well with Namor, so we can add more power to that location without putting any other bodies there. Uh, really, really solid way of diversifying uh, locations you're playing to. And of course, the build around for this deck, the, uh, the big payoff, if you like, Spectrum. Uh, on reveal, looking to give all your ongoing cards plus 2 power. Uh, which is kind of a fantastic payoff on that final turn of the game is to dump stats all over the place. So, uh, I'm going to remove it from the deck apparently, which is totally what I meant to do. We'll go and put it back while I speak real quick. Um, yeah, as I said before guys, of course, just from the nature of Marvel Snap, um, I am going to be playing against some folks on the desktop client here who are in pool 3 with me and been playing... Uh, oh dear... I did forget the desktop client struggles with deck selection a little bit. Let me go uh, remedy that. We're obviously going to be playing with some folks who, unfortunately, for you know better or worse, um, are in pool three, much like myself. So if you're in pool one and you don't necessarily see the results you were expecting from a deck like this, don't panic too much. It's very, very possible that the deck is you know very, very solid for the level you're at because you won't be playing against some of the cards that I am, which is a pretty noticeable difference if you ask me. So, desktop client obviously still in beta, still needs some work, but let's see if we can disco um, with this ongoing poor one deck and see how it plays out for us, shall we? Alrighty, location numero uno. Well, on reveal effects triggering twice is going to be pretty good for this spectrum. Uh, unfortunately, no early plays here, so we're just going to have to pass and see what uh, see what is going on. Put it with the Nova into uh, Kamataj. Not a big deal, honestly. Nova can go anywhere. Uh, most of whether or not this on reveal trigger matters. Okay, well, we're playing this Nightcrawler somewhere, uh, probably with the intention of moving it into the miniaturized lab uh, later on. Don't want it to fill up space on Kamataj, though, really. Uh, so I'm just going to pop it into the unknown. I, I guess I can pop it into miniaturized lab and then maybe move it out if I need it. That's probably better, actually. Not going to be able to put anything here for a while anyway, so let's do that. Point goes with Colossus here to challenge the same location. So we are currently behind there. So going to have to do some work to juice up the miniaturized lab a bit later if we want to win it. Okay, the big house is pretty bad news, honestly. Because um, a lot of our top end here does not get played into this location. I guess we can try and stack up some ongoing on the big house. So let's go, let's go Punisher over here. Opponent plays Bucky Barnes on Karmataj, so they're going to be looking to, no doubt, uh, blow that location up very shortly. Okay, um, Angela's a pretty decent pickup here, in fairness. We're a little shy on ongoing stuff for this Spectrum, honestly. We might only get to buff two things in the end game. Um, I think what I'm going to do is look to go Angela Yondu on the big house and try and lock this location up. And then hopefully I can, like, Claw into Spectrum to win the Miniaturized Lab. That's going to be the plan, I think. Put all Daredevil armor. So, getting the impression this is Destroyer. Uh, so, we should be expecting a big end game 16 power unit, which uh, will clear up Kamataj. That's a bit unfortunate. Yeah, okay. So, I think we are kind of priced into clawing in Kamataj here, try and juice up Miniaturized Lab. We'll see what we're doing. So they might very well Professor X us out of a location. No, they get they get their hobgoblin. Um, that doesn't work the way you wanted it to, friend. 
Uh, this is Carmitage. Oh, buddy, no. Uh, Hobgoblin there, if you're not familiar. Um, on reveal, your opponent gets it. Negative 8 power. Turns out, that's an on reveal effect, which is not great to play into Carmitage. Um, so opponent there, kind of spuffing away a cube. And uh, accidentally Hobgoblin in, into a location that did not achieve very much. Let's try and take another game here and see if we can do the thing. Okay, so Sakaar's going to drag Claw out of our hand. That's a pretty reasonable one to drag out. I imagine we're going to try and put this Namor in the middle here to be backed up by this. Um, good chance we hold this Ant-Man to stack onto Angela for stats a little down the line. Don't think we need to play it out on turn, turn 1 here. Opponent has no turn 1 play after their Agent 13 got dragged out. Daily Bugle kicks in. We get a copy of Spectrum. Okay. Well, that's a, a very pretty Spectrum. And a pretty good one to pick up a bonus copy of, to be honest. Uh, I think we still want to stack Namor Center. So I'm going to put Angela on the side here and look to stack her up on this location. With Ant-Man and, and Nightcrawler to give her some bonuses. Put it with the cable, so they're going to rip a card away from our deck. Probably our Spectrum would be quite funny. Oh. Well, Christmas and Cosmos kind of kicks that plan in the teeth. No bonuses for our friend Angela. So I guess I'm going to go Ant-Man, Nightcrawler, and look to shift Nightcrawler over into the Crimson Cosmos uh, next turn. I'll just Beast, Middle, Ant-Man. Okay, it looks like they might have got a copy of our Ant-Man from the Daily Bugle, because this looks like my one. Pretty interesting how that works. So I'm going to shift this over here, try and fill up the Cosmos, and jam Namor Center, and hopefully Namor can take Daily Bugle all by itself. Punter plays out the Punisher. It looks like my Punisher too. Mantis does trigger. That's a little unfortunate. Okay, so we're going to look to... I guess just lock up Sakaar in addition to Daily Bugle. So we're going to Iron Man into Spectrum, I think, is the plan here. And accept that we're losing the Crimson Cosmos. Opponent will Moon Girl into Yondu. Okay. Opponent's Ant-Man is turned on. Our Colossus is dead, I imagine. Uh, well, okay. Let's do, try and do the thing. Opponent's going to snap. I do think there's a good chance we have enough power here. Uh, turning on our own Ant-Man, Spectrum juicing up four things. This seems like it should probably be good enough. Even though I know they have their own Spectrum, I think I think this is enough. They play Devil Dino mid. Uh, oh, we might be short. Oh, that's unfortunate. Well, we did the thing, but uh, yeah, it turns out Devil Dino mid is going to be enough stats to take, uh, take Namor off of the Daily Bugle, which is pretty rough. But that's a pretty good showcase of what um, what the deck is trying to do. Definitely played out the way you'd, you'd hoped it would. Let's take one more, see if we can make this video 15 minutes and, uh, and showcase three games with the deck. Seems like a, a decent formula to go by. Let's see if we can't uh, take two out of three, huh? Daily Bugle gives us a white tiger. Okay, so Ant-Man, gonna, just going to play this somewhere safe, which Daily Bugle is definitely a safe location. Don't have to take any risks about it randomly getting destroyed or flipping up a location that I can't fill over the course of the game. So, opponent Korg's a rock into our deck. Sokovia is going to make us lose Claw as well. Okay, both players losing Claw. It's pretty funny. Uh, yeah, no plays here for us, unfortunately. But we wouldn't have had any plays anyway. Sokovia did not change that. Sokovia. You'll quickly learn, folks, that my pronunciation is terrible, uh, especially on locations, so my apologies about that. Scorpion looking pretty good here. Hand is pretty full, so rips a chunk of power off of our stuff. I think we are just going to play out this Punisher into the Daily Bugle, look to stack up a location with ongoing effects for this uh, Spectrum on turn six. Hopefully, maybe we can White Tiger into the Danger Room to, to fill this up and... Add some power there. Opponent loses their Psylocke to Danger Room. Okie dokie. Um, 
Okay, so a little, little stuck up on being able to get everything I want out of my hand out here. Uh, I think there's a good chance I'm just supposed to Cosmo. Seems like it's a little more impactful than Colossus. There's a chance maybe I draw another 3-drop I can play next to Colossus next turn too, instead of playing Iron Man or, or White Tiger. So let's Cosmo mid. Uh, well, we hit, the, we hit the Wong lane with the Cosmo, which is pretty cool. So we're going to get to turn off all these uh, on-reveal effects from our opponent over there, which is ridiculous. We did. Okay, so let's stack up some ongoing stuff. Uh, I think what we're going to do is go Captain America Colossus and then look to Spectrum in Daily Bugle, hopefully, so that we can buff uh, Ant-Man and both the guys over here. Point with White Tiger. Okay, so that's a little rough if they play anything to... Oh, this is tough. We can... We can try and take the Danger Room with Namor. We can just Iron Man a location and accept we lose. Whichever one we don't play to. Oh, this is this is rough. It's, I kind of shot myself in the foot here by uh, not being able to Spectrum into uh, Sokova. I guess this is my best bet to win the game. Opponent's not snapping, so I'll give them a cube if they outplay us. Okay, looks like we've... Oh, Doctor Doom's really good here. Uh, I'm not sure we beat Doc Doom. We do get Daily Bugle, but unfortunately only 11 power here in Sokova. So unfortunately, a 1-2 in the three-game set for this deck, but very much showcasing its plan. Um, unsurprisingly, some of these pool three cards catching up with us just a little bit too. Um, but very much a good showcase of what the deck is trying to do, and some of the, the late-game options that you can have um, in playing a deck like this. You kind of see that it's not always a case of just playing Spectrum uh, out on the final turn of the game. There are some other options in terms of Iron Man, Namor, maybe clawing to a location, depending on how many ongoing creatures you got down early. Uh, which makes this one really sweet. I think there's a lot of flexibility uh, in a deck like this, and that's very, very cool. So if you're looking for pool one suggestions to try out so far, how about this list? The ongoing deck from Yo Yakuman. Uh, link available in the article in the description box down below. Uh, thank you for checking this out, guys. If this content has been helpful for you, please let us know. I want to know whether it's worth us continuing to do more and more of these uh, and featuring some uh, creator content as we go. Uh, if you have liked, subscribe, press the button, turn on the bell, all the wonderful YouTube stuff, please the algorithm. It will let us know that we're doing a good job. And hopefully I'll see you again for more Marvel Snap content very, very soon. But until next time, I've been Howling Minds. You've been amazing. And this has been Marvel Snap Zone. Have a good one.